the great awakening is coming the rivers about to burst hallelujah this is a prophecy from kenneth e hagan in his book i believe in visions i believe it's around 1950 warn this generation as did noah his generation for judgment is about to fall and these sayings shall be fulfilled shortly for i am coming soon jesus repeated this is the last revival i am preparing my people for my coming judgment is coming but i will call my people away even unto myself before the worst shall come but be thou faithful watch and pray for the time of the end of all things is at hand at the time i had this vision naturally i interpreted the the scenes but uh to mean that america would experience the devastation of war however when i saw television and newspaper photographs of destruction wrought by student rebellion and uh and race riots in the 1960s i realized that these scenes partially fulfilled this vision this is why it is so important not to place your own interpretation on the things god shows you these were <clears throat> those who were present that night under the tent said i read the scroll aloud for about 30 minutes i cannot remember all of it and in the uh vision uh video i just made i described that uh what's on that scroll you can look at the other video vision from 1950. um i cannot remember all of it i handed the scroll back to the writer and he rode away in the direction from which he had come then i was conscious of the fact that i still lay flat on my face on the floor and for a few minutes i remained there feeling the glory of this miraculous visitation again i heard a voice say come up hither come to come up to the throne of god so again i saw jesus standing about where the top of the tent should be and i went to him through the air when i realized when i reached him together we continued on to heaven we came to the throne of God and behold and be, and beheld it, it beheld it in all its splendor i was not able to look upon the face of god i only beheld his form the first thing that attracted my attention was the rainbow around about the throne it was very beautiful the second thing i noticed was the winged creatures on either side of the throne they were peculiar looking creatures and as i walked up with jesus these creatures stood with wings outstretched they were saying something but they ceased and folded their wings they had eyes of fire set all around their heads and they looked in all directions at once I stood with Jesus in the midst, about 18 to 24 feet from the throne. I looked at the rainbow first, at the winged creatures, and then I started to look at the one who sat upon the throne. Just Jesus told me not, Jesus told me not to look upon his face. I could only see a form of a being seated upon the throne. Jesus talked with me and for nearly an hour i saw him plainly as i ever saw anyone in this life i heard jesus as he spoke to me this is exciting <clears throat> and for the first time i actually looked into jesus's eyes many times when relating this experience i am asked what did his eyes look like all i can say is that they looked like wells of living love it seemed as if one could see half a mile deep into them and i want to say that i have a pastor and his name is eddie treyers when he first came 
to the Northern Virginia area. Actually, he was born and raised here. However, when I first met him, maybe uh, 1997, um, he was leading a meeting, uh, a small meeting, and the Spirit of God fell in that meeting, and uh, he came he came over to me, and I looked up and looked into his eyes, and I saw this, the same thing. It was like wells of love, and it looked like they were they were so deep, like on into eternity. So, I understand this what he's saying here from from uh, that perspective because I saw that in a in Eddie Trader's eyes. It seemed it seemed as if one could see half a mile deep into them, and the tender look of his love is indescribable. And I looked into his face and into his eyes and I fell at his feet. I noticed that his feet were bare, <clears throat> and I laid the palms of my hands on the top of his feet and laid my forehead on the back of my hands. Weeping, I said, O oh Lord, no one, no one as unworthy as I should, be, should look upon your face. Jesus told me to stand up straight on my feet. I stood up. He called me worthy to look upon his face because he had called me and had cleansed me from all sin. He told me things concerning my ministry. He went on to say that he had called me before I was born. He said that although Satan had tried to destroy my life many times, his angels had watched over me and had cared for me. Jesus told me that even as he had appeared to my mother before I was born and had told her, fear not, this child will be born. I would minister in the power of the Spirit and would fulfill the ministry he has called me to. Then he talked to me about the last church I had pastored, saying that, it, that at that time, February 1949, I had entered into the first phase of my ministry. He said, some ministers I have called to the ministry live and die without getting into even the first phase of ministry. I, <clears throat> the first phase of ministry I have for them. Jesus added that, <clears throat> added, that is one reason why many ministers die prematurely. They are living only in his permissive will. Then I'm going to skip here to um, the next section here about seeing Jesus' wounds. Then the Lord said to me, stretch forth thine hand. He held his own hands out before him, and I looked into them. For some reason, I expected to see a scar in each hand where the nails had been pierced, whether the nails had pierced his flesh. I should have known better, but many times we get ideas that are not really scriptural, yet they are accepted beliefs. Instead of scars, I saw in the palms of his hands the wounds of the crucifixion, three cornered, judged, jagged holes. Each hole was large enough for me to have put my finger in it. I could see light on the other side of the hole. For the for after the vision, I got my I got out my Bible and turned to John chapter twenty to read about to read about the time Christ appeared to his disciples following his resurrection. When Jesus first appeared to them, Thomas was not with them. The disciples told Thomas that he had seen that they had seen the Lord, but Thomas was unbelieving and said, except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails and put my finger in the print of the nails and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. Eight days later, while the disciples, including Thomas, were together in a room, Jesus appeared again in their midst. He turned to Thomas and said, <clears throat> Reach hither thy finger and behold my hands and reach hither thy hand and thrust it into my side and be not faithless but believing 
Then Thomas, knowing it was Jesus, exclaimed, my Lord and my God. I had deeper insight into, into uh, I had deeper insight then, late, and had deeper insight then into what Thomas had seen. He could have put his finger into the wound in Jesus' hands, and he could have thrust his hand into the wound, wound in Jesus in the Lord's side. As I looked upon the wounds in his hand outstretched before me, I did as he instructed and held my hands out in front of me. He laid his finger of the he laid the finger of his right hand in the palm of my right hand and then in the left palm. The moment he did, my hands began to burn as if a coal of fire had been placed in them. Then Jesus told me to kneel down before him. When I did, he had his hand upon my he laid his hand upon my head, saying that he had called me and had given me a special anointing to minister to the sick. He was so he went on to instruct me that when I would pray and lay hands on the sick, I was to lay one hand on each side of the body. If I felt if I felt the fire jump from hand to hand, an evil spirit or demon was present in the body causing affliction. I should call him out in Jesus' name, and the demon or demons would have to go. If the fire or the anointing in my hands did not jump from hand to hand, it was a case needing healing only. <clears throat> I should pray for the person in Jesus' name, and it, and he and if he would believe and accept it, the anointing would leave my hands and go into that person's body, driving out the disease and bringing healing. When the fire or anointing left my hands and went into the person's body, I would know he was healed. That's so beautiful. I and I believe this is for me, and I believe this is for anybody listening who would receive it. I fell at Jesus' feet and pleaded, Lord, don't send me. Send somebody else. Lord, please don't send me. Just give me a little church to pastor somewhere. I would I would rather not go, Lord. I have heard so, so much criticism of the, those who pray for the sick. <clears throat> I just want to, I just want a commonplace ministry. Jesus rebuked me saying, I'll go with you and stand by your side as you pray for the sick. And many times you will see me. Je occasionally, I will open my eyes of someone in the audience and they will say, why, I saw Jesus standing by that man as he prayed for the sick. Jesus asked me, who called you, me or the people? Well, you did, Lord. He explained that I should not fear him and, not, and I should fear him and not people because even though people may criticize me, they are not my judge. I will stand before his judgment seat one day and give an account to him for what I have done and this ministry, whether I have used it rightly or wrongly. All right, Lord, I said. I'll go if you'll go with me. I'll do my best and be as faithful as I know how to be. Then there was, then there swelled up within my heart a love such as I had never known for those who criticize this type of ministry. I said, Lord, I'll pray for them for they don't know or they wouldn't say the things they do. Lord, I've said similar things but I didn't realize or see as I do now, and neither do they. Forgive them, Lord. Then he said, Go your way, my son. Fulfill this ministry, and be thou faithful, for the time is short. As I walked away from the throne of God, Jesus told me, Be sure to give me all the praise and glory for all that is done, and be careful about money. 
mostly many of my servants whom I have anointed for this type of ministry have become money-minded and have lost the anointing and ministry I gave them. I think I'll stop there. This is very exciting to me. Praise the Lord. Praise God. This was 71 years ago that the Lord, that Brother Hagen had this, had this vision. And we are just right at the precipice. So we're going to see these mighty gifts just poured out upon mankind. And this last great awakening and we'll be a body without spot or wrinkle and we'll be caught away with Jesus in the air. And that's just the way it is, whether you believe it or not. Amen. Amen.